Hey gang, Tim here at Core Electronics and I have next to me a sweet 8.9 inch touchscreen that is fully compatible with almost anything. So let's set it up today with a Raspberry Pi single board computer. Protected by this black case, which also doubles as a stand and enclosed completely in an aluminum body, this screen is rugged enough for the maker on the go. The screw mounts on the back and the 10 point touch screen makes it also perfect for user interfaces. This screen also packs two integrated speakers adjustable on the fly via the side mounted jog wheel. Complete with a full HD screen, this will display dashboards, art installations, promotional storefront videos, or other media impeccably. On the table before me is everything you need to make this screen work. We have a Raspberry Pi single board computer, in my case, a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. Naturally, you're also gonna need the DF Robot 8.9 inch IPS screen, as well as the mini HDMI to micro HDMI, the USB 3.0 to USB-C connector, and the thumb screws that come in the box with this display. We will also have a micro SD card flashed with Raspberry Pi OS, a power supply, and your trusty mouse and keyboard. First, let's attach the stand to the display. Line up the case with the display like so, and install the thumb screws snugly. You can find these thumb screws in the fluoro Ziploc bag. From here, we are simply gonna set up this Raspberry Pi as a desktop computer with the DF robot display as the touch monitor. Thus, we will insert that micro SD card that we flashed using the Raspberry Pi imager to our Raspberry Pi single board computer. Link in the description if you need a hand with flashing. With that complete, connect up the micro HDMI to the mini HDMI on the screen. Connect up the bottom USB 3.0 on the Raspberry Pi to the middle USB-C port on the screen. Then connect power to the system via a Raspberry Pi power supply and it will boot as normal. The Raspberry Pi provides enough power to run the screen as is. I will also connect a mouse and keyboard to the Raspberry Pi USB ports. Note, if you're doing high intensity arithmetic or powering multiple other devices simultaneously with the Raspberry Pi, I would recommend supplying energy to the screen with another power supply. You can see when using a full HD screen with a default Raspberry Pi OS, it results in small icons and toolbars. This can be fixed using the appearance settings. The easiest way to get to this setting is by right clicking with your mouse anywhere on the desktop and selecting desktop preferences. From here, simply adjust the text size to 20, which is the font, adjust the mouse cursor to large and adjust the icon size to very large. Doing all these changes will make for a much nicer user experience. This screen comes with internal screen settings that can be accessed and navigated by pressing in the jog dial. This will let you do everything that is to be expected of a modern display. You can also adjust contrast, sharpness, DCR, whatever takes your fancy. By default, the display is gonna be in landscape mode. Turning this display to portrait orientation, we will need to adjust both the IPS display and the touch input. Now with the screen fully operational and Raspberry Pi OS running, the best method to rotate the IPS display is to click on the Raspberry Pi symbol, scroll down to preferences, and then select screen configuration. Having done this, it's gonna open up the screen layout editor. From here, select the configure top down menu, go down and hover over screens, hover over HDMI one, hover over orientation, and select right or whatever different orientation you desire. Then after a quick reboot, your system will be orientated to portrait mode. After rebooting, you're gonna notice that the touch now needs to be rotated as the hardware does not realize the new rotation of the screen. To do this, we're gonna open up the terminal using that black button on the top left of the screen. Then we're gonna open up the full article for this guide linked down below and find the adjusting touch orientation section. We're gonna copy and paste each command from here into the terminal. Press enter and allow each to finish before moving on to the next command. If you have a prompted with, do you wanna continue? 
press Y and then the Enter key to continue the process. This is set up to work no matter what Raspberry Pi model you are using, so some terminal commands may say that that folder has already been made or something to that effect. Don't worry about it and just continue the steps. The final command will open up a text file which we will customize. Do so by scrolling down to the section referring to the touchscreen with your arrow keys on your keyboard. As I've rotated the display by 90 degrees, I will copy and paste this option found on the full article directly beneath the line. For my situation here, I have rotated the screen by 90 degrees. So I'm gonna copy and paste this option here and paste it directly beneath the line, match is touchscreen on. For setups where you want 180 degrees or 270 degree rotations, you would instead add one of these options. Once done, press Control X, Y, and then the Enter key to save these changes. Then reboot your Raspberry Pi system to make these changes present. After reboot, the touchscreen will be oriented correctly and you can get back to using the touchscreen just as you'd expect. This screen is robust enough to function as is as a kiosk UI interface. We have some great Raspberry Pi kiosk guides. Just check the description if you're interested. These screens also have a hidden extra feature that is impossible to demonstrate with a Raspberry Pi single board computer. This is USB-C power pass-through. The basic gist of what goes on is that two USB PD enabled devices negotiate a power contract, also referred to as a handshake, when they're plugged into each other. But not only does it do this, it will also enable touch display data to be sent through the same USB-D connection as well. This feature is shown perfectly using a Latte Panda Alpha single ball computer and the DF robot display. When set up, it has full touch compatibility and runs full HD video smoothly whilst being powered through the screen. The screen is then powered by the Latte Panda power supply. Thus, only a single USB-C cord is employed to do touch, display, and power. And with that, if you have any questions about this or anything else, come write me a message below. We are full-time makers and we are here to help. And that's it for today. With my system fully functional and you with all the information to do the same, until next time, stay cozy.